Good morning and welcome to St. Alphonsus Rodriguez on this Friday, the first Friday of the month. Today the church celebrates the memorial of St. Gregory the Great. St. Gregory wrote, the emperor of heaven, the Lord of men and of angels, has sent you his epistles for your life's advantage, and yet you neglect to read them eagerly. Study them, I beg you, and meditate daily on the words of your creator. Learn the heart of God in the words of God, that you may desire more eagerly for things eternal, and that your soul may be kindled with greater longings for heavenly joy. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord. Christian meditation is reflecting, pondering, and considering the things of God. We meditate to give God our full attention. And as followers of Jesus, we live and move and have our being in him. Like electronic devices, we don't possess the power, but we receive it. And one way we receive the power of the Holy Spirit is through meditation and prayer on the word of God. In truth, we are continually meditating and pondering or reflecting on something within our inner soul. We can easily lose our focus on Christ and miss what we need most. How do we simply shift our meditations squarely under God's guidance? Since Christian meditation is directly focused on Christ and his word, we need to know how to get back to God when we lose this focus. It begins with Jesus and the moment we start interacting with him, he ministers to us and he guides us with his eye. In Psalm 32, we proclaim, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. How comforting to know that as we meditate, God is watching us and he is with us. Recently, I started my day about an hour earlier. I didn't take as much time in the morning with my scriptures. And with so much going on that day, I was out to finish the tasks at hand. A phone call, several text messages later in the morning. And because of the nature of the conversation of all of those, my focus began to shift away from God and onto the dialogue that was happening. Within an hour, I could feel the life or the power drain from me. I stopped myself from complaining and feeling upset, and I acknowledged to God that I had lost my focus. I had let the worldly things take over. I forgot that God was there with me. That morning, interestingly, I had read a Psalm, Psalm 59, and the main words that came to me were, deliver me. Deliver me from my enemies, O God. Protect me from those who rise up against me. I will sing of your strength, and in the morning I will sing of your love. I took some time at that point when my heart felt so sad, and I allowed time to recall that psalm, and I prayed on the words, deliver me. A light began to form in my mind as God's word was penetrating not just my mind, but my emotions, the place where I was hurt, and my will, the place where I make decisions. As if hearing the text for the first time, I gently and calmly shifted my meditation back to God under his guidance. Christ's word is life-giving to us because it is inspired by the Holy Spirit. That morning, it was like I plugged my electrical cord into my power source so that I could see and hear the presence of God in my life again. Rather than being disturbed when our minds wander, we can turn it to prayer. No matter what distracts us, you and I can use the situation to meditate on Jesus' life-giving words. 
We turn them over and over in our minds as we do the truth from our heads to our hearts so that Jesus is burning within. That's when we recognize that once again, his healing presence is closer than our own breath and we can see him. We can see ourselves in a new light because we are under his guidance. So throughout this day, think about how can you meditate on Christ? How can you meditate on scripture? While you're writing, while you're driving, while you're going about your job, talk to God. Allow him to place his eyes on you and guide you through your day. Dearest Mary, mother of my Lord, intercede to deliver me from my mind wandering as I set my heart under the guidance of your son's words. Give me the purity of heart to will one thing and may that one thing be you, Lord Jesus, the name above every other name. Amen. So we begin our morning prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Come, let us adore him. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and, and to, to the Son, Son and, and to, to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Jesus said, everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. St. Gregory the Great prayed, lived, and taught the wisdom of God's word. On that rock, he sought to build up the faith of the church, which he served through his labors as Pope. And this morning we pray the canticle of Sirach. Happy the man who meditates on wisdom and reflects on knowledge. She will nourish him with the bread of understanding and give him the water of learning to drink. He will lean upon her and not fall. He will trust in her and not be put to shame. She will exalt him above his fellows. In the assembly, she will make him eloquent. Joy and gladness he will find an everlasting name inherit. Glory to, to the, the Father, and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, is, is now, now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. God made him perpetual in his office when he bestowed on him the priesthood of his people. He established him in honor and crowned him with lofty majesty. He gave to him his laws and authority to prescribe and to judge, to teach the precepts to his people and the ritual to the descendants of Israel. He was filled with the spirit of understanding. He poured forth his words of wisdom and in prayer gave thanks to the Lord who directed his knowledge and his counsel. And we pray the canticle of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of his servant, David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, 
and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray to Jesus Christ, God's wisdom and word, through the intercession of St. Gregory. Let your spirit come to us. O wisdom of God, through you all things were made. Remake the human race in God's own image. Let your spirit come to us. O wisdom of God, you are the truth by which we live. Pour out upon us all the gift of true discernment. Let your spirit come to us. O wisdom of God, you speak through all the wise. Make wise all those who study, preach, and teach your word. Let your spirit come to us. O wisdom of God, you inspire all good works. Lead in faithful labor all those who labor in your name. Let your spirit come to us. And we pause to add our personal intentions. Let your spirit come to us. And together we pray with confidence in the words our Savior taught us. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And together we pray, God, God our Father, you inspired in St. Gregory an abiding love for word and worship. Through his intercession, continue to nourish your people from this fountain of life, which rises from the heart of Jesus Christ, our rock, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us and protect us from all evil and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed and glorious Friday.